Good morning, everyone. We are so excited to be together with all of you today and back at our normal service times. This morning, we have our children's and youth ministry starting back up, as well as our Sunday morning life groups. What a crazy year it has been, right? But God has continued to carry us through, and we know that He has had a hand in getting us to this point today. If you are new here, welcome. Please take a moment to check out the bulletin that was left on your seat. You can also find more details about our church on our website at firstmedina.org. 
There's a connection card on the homepage you can fill out to help us get to know you a little better or to submit a prayer request. Now, as we continue our time together this morning in worship, we hope you will be encouraged and God will be honored and glorified by our time together. All right, there's the lights. Good morning. My name is Ryan Simmons. I'm a deacon here at First Baptist of Medina. Um, welcome back to Inside Services for Second Service. Yeah. I have been um, a, a loyal member of the Outdoor Club for the last, like, four months, so it's a little weird to be back inside. Um, but it's really cool, the fellowship. It's really cool to hear other people singing. It's really cool to not be yelling at my kids in the vehicle. Uh, repeatedly every Sunday. So it's really good to be back. If this is your first time being here, welcome. Um, We're glad you're here. So uh, this morning I'm giving our our monthly pastoral search uh, update. Um, I not only am a deacon, but I uh, lead that group as well. So I frequently give updates as a part of my job. Like I'm, 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 I work at a web development agency and sometimes updates for projects are not super fun to give because we're behind or, or something isn't working the way we want it to. And sometimes updates are really fun to give because we have good news. We've accomplished things we wanted to accomplish. I'm happy to say this is an update that I'm excited to give because we have lots of good news to share. Um, so we... Since the start of August, I uh, have reviewed 65 resumes all together as part of the pastoral search process. That's a lot. Uh, that is a lot of sermons we've listened to. Uh, we've listened to sermons for nearly all of the gentlemen who sent us resumes. So uh, it's, it's a lot. Uh, but we have weeded out roughly 50 of those. Um, the reason we weed out people are for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they just have little to no experience. So we, we had a couple guys, bless their heart, who just graduated from college and wanted to work here. And um, it wasn't a good fit for us. We, we wish them the best. Sometimes we weed people out because the kind of church they pastored at is not the same as, as our church. So the experience is very different. Sometimes their, their preaching or speaking or teaching style is, is not a good fit. Sometimes their social media presence was really bad. And by that, I mean that the things that they chose to talk about on their Facebook was um, not God honoring. And so we, we've really worked hard to vet and, and pull those people out. So uh, out of those 65, we have sent interview questionnaires to um, roughly, I think, 12, something like that at this point. Uh, out of those... Uh, we we have done a first Zoom interviews with seven. So you can see these numbers are getting smaller and smaller, right? Out of those, we've done a second interview uh, with two. We have another second interview coming this week. Second interviews, the first interview usually is just with the pastor. The second interview means that we really liked what we heard and we want to get to know them better and we want to get to know their wife as well. And so for the second interview, we, we have questions just for their wife. Um, we put out, when we first started this, we connected with uh, Liberty, Cedarville, Biola, uh, Dallas Theological Seminary, Cornerstone, um, and I think there might be one more or two more that I'm missing. And we also submitted our job description to a job listing site that specializes in churches. Um, we are, at this point, because we have a really good candidates that we're, we're narrowing down to, we're closing down most of those. Uh, which that's that's good. That means that we do, we feel like we have uh, really good candidates, and we do. Um, it is a blessing to interview these guys. Uh, interviews last uh, for about two hours, and our team who've been, done a phenomenal job. I can't. I really can't say enough kind things about them. Have done uh, two interviews a week, and then another two-hour meeting as a group every Wednesday. So we're, we're meeting sometimes uh, six to eight hours a week as a group to work on this. Um, the gentlemen we're meeting are, are blessing themselves. We had one gentleman last week. We, we always ask, or we have asked everyone, you know, what, can you tell us about a time when you shared the gospel recently outside of a Sunday morning? And so he told this amazing story 
I was like, well, I shared it with my neighbor over here, and he got saved while we were we were doing a cookout at our house. And, and then I shared it with a guy across the street when he came over for dinner at our house, and, and he's been a member now for a few years at our church. He got saved, and then I'm working over here. He's not quite there yet, but we're working on it. Like, man, what a blessing. That's awesome. That's the kind of people that we're interviewing. That's the kind of people that have made it this far. Um, so we are actively narrowing down to people that are passionate about the gospel, who are passionate about teaching God's word, who have a vision for, for seeing um, their churches grow, who have a vision for seeing people get loved on well at church. It's been amazing. So uh, I never want to like say we're nearly done because you know you say that kind of stuff and then something happens but it's looking very good and i'm excited for the future the guys that we have narrowed down to are uh solid every every single one of them we honestly are in, in good hands at this point it's it's choosing the best of the best and not just the good from the bad um and that's kind of the stage where we're at um I think that's all I have. I think the last thing is just continue to pray. There are so many times on Wednesdays where we can tell that people are praying for us when we're meeting. Um, we have been unified this whole time. We don't have cliques. We don't have divisions. We do disagree sometimes about different things, but we come out of there as friends. And that doesn't happen by accident. You know, God is in that. It happens through prayer. So thank you for praying for us. We've been doing the 828 prayer plan where you can pray for us at 828 a.m. and or 828 p.m. I don't really care what time you pray. Pray for us. It's so helpful. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and uh, and then I'll, I'll hand it over. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you so much that we're back here as a body of believers. I pray for our safety. Keep us safe as we're coming back together. Help us to, to be smart about that. Lord, I thank you for this pastoral search team. I, I thank you for each of their hearts. They're amazing. They are amazing people. They've given so much of their time. They've sacrificed so much of their energy. They've listened to dozens and dozens and dozens of sermons from dozens and dozens of different pastors all over. Um, Lord, I thank you for how um, well they have worked, how hard they have worked. I thank you for the men we've interviewed as well who have their own stories and backgrounds, their own passions, their likes and dislikes. Thank you for the clarity you provided during those interviews to know who to move forward with and who not to move forward with. Pray, Lord, continue to give us wisdom and give us clarity. Uh, you are certainly not done with us. You're certainly not done with our country. You're certainly not done with seeing people come to know you. And I pray that you would help us to find the man to lead that charge here, to lead us towards um, a spirit of, of uh, love for our neighbor and for our community. Lord, I thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for your grace in our lives. Without that, we are nothing, Lord. I thank you for all that you have done in this process. Continue to work in the process to bring it to a good finish. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. One, one more thing. So uh, we won't always celebrate work anniversaries, but sometimes when they're really big, we do want to call those out. So if you have ever uh, admired the clean carpets, the clean chairs, the lights that work, the heating that works, the AC that works, uh, the parking lot lights, everything that is related to facilities, then Derwin Loverink is the man to thank. And he uh, is celebrating 26 years here at First Baptist Medina, which is incredible. So if you see him, uh, give him a big hug. Don't give him a big hug. Shake his, don't shake his hand. Uh, just wave at him. But tell him thank you for uh, for serving the church so well for, for 26 years. That's awesome. All right, now I'm done. Thank you. Let's stand together and let's worship. I said the world. i 
Amen. Hey, real quick before I read Psalm 27 to you, uh, something cool happened this last Thursday. Uh, raise your hand if you know Pastor Bruce. Uh, awesome. So Pastor Bruce went and he spoke at Highland uh, at the Highland football team, and he decided that he was um, going to go out there and share something with them. And you won't believe what happened. Fifteen of those uh, students, those players, decided to raise their hand, accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So. Amen to that. Glad that uh, God could use Pastor Bruce through that. So uh, if you think about it this week, uh, pray for those new believers. All right, let's continue in worship together. As we do, I just remi- wanted to remind you of something. As I read this, I'm going to read the whole chapter, 27, uh, Psalm 27. I want you to reflect on it. I want you to internalize these words and meditate on these words. And as we continue in worship together, know that God is our stronghold. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came against me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies stumbled and fell. Though an army deployed against me, my heart will not be afraid. Though a war breaks out against me, I will still be confident. I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life gazing on his beauty, uh, on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple. For he will conceal me in his shelter for the day of adversity. I'm sorry. He will hide me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be high above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices in his tent with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Lord, hear my voice when I call. Be gracious to me and answer me. My heart says this about you. Seek his face. Lord, I will seek your face. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. You do not leave me or abandon me. God is my salvation. 
Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord cares for me because of my adversaries. Show me your way, Lord, and lead me on a level path. Do not give me over to the will of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing violence. And listen to this. This is the last two verses of Psalm 27. I am certain that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart be courageous. Wait for the Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore.
down my knees and down my God, we desire that to be our prayer, that you would be our everything. We desire nothing else besides you. I pray that as we continue in worship together, as we can continue uh, fellowshipping together, as we continue in your word, that uh, you would just show up in a really cool way this morning. You are our delight. You are our everything. And we rest in you this morning. God, we think about uh, all the things going on in our lives right now uh, that could cause us to be upset or in depression or uh, discourage us, but we know that you um, show up in our weakness and you make yourself uh, known and you make yourself, that's when you're the strongest, when in our weakness, we rely on you, God. Even in our strength, help us to rely on you. It's really easy to reach out and ask for help when we're troubled or when we're depressed. Help us to reach out to you even in our times of good. We think about our community now. Uh, as school is going, I pray for safety for the teachers and for the students. Um, as the governor uh, talked about uh, recently, this being a day of prayer, 
specifically for our leadership, specifically for uh, President Trump and his family and his wife. I pray that you would continue to give him healing as he is recovering from COVID-19. I pray that you would provide him and uh, his team that he has around him with the right things to do and the right discernment, wisdom to move forward. God, it calls us in the Bible to support our government, to pray for our government. Uh, So we do that now. We pray for those who are in authority over us. Uh, God, you are our ultimate authority, but those people that were placed here on earth uh, who are our authority now, we lift them up. We ask that you continue to draw them to you, that they might come to know you, that they might live in your presence. I pray for guidance in all things. Thank you for our time together again, and we ask that you bless the rest of our time as we continue in worship of you. In Jesus' name, amen. remember now psalm 27 that said the one thing that he desires is to seek god's face that's the one thing that he heard from god and so as we end let us now turn and do that let us focus on jesus only jesus turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful Things ever will grow strange be in the light of his glory and grace. 
All right, we are in our last week of our series called Rethinking the Church. And each week we've been in Acts chapter two. So if you have a Bible or uh, you have a uh, device, you can go ahead and uh, either flip there or pull that up on your device. Acts chapter two uh, is where we'll be at again. And uh, we've been talking about the fact that what came out of, of this incredible day. And we've looked at aspects of this incredible day. What, what came out of this incredible day was the church. This was the birth of the church. This is the coming of the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the birth of the church, the body of Christ, the, the bride of Christ, this organism that God was going to, to use to take the gospel to the ends of the earth is what Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter five that Jesus died for. The church, even with all of its flaws. And we certainly have flaws, right? Because the church is made up of flawed people, right? Put your hand up if you're flawed here today. All right. Yeah, my hand, like I could put that up first and highest. All right. Um, We're flawed. And if you didn't put your hand up, unfortunately, you just lied to yourself and to everybody. Like everybody is flawed. So welcome to a place that is full of flawed people, but we just sang about someone who's perfect, right? It wasn't us, we sang about our savior, Jesus. What we've looked at in Acts chapter two, um, at the the church kind of in its infancy is we've seen three very clear elements uh, of the church that the church was really marked by or defined by. And those three elements were this, there were this unified community. They were this devoted community to both God and to fellow believers. Uh, And then lastly, what we'll talk about today uh, is it was a multiplying community. And, you know, maybe a couple, um, you know, long, long time later on right now here today in our day and time, the church today in its old age, you could maybe say, has some things to learn from the church in its infancy. Right, And so we've talked about, again, being a unified community, a devoted community to both God and to fellow believers in a multiplying community. Now, next week, we're going to be starting a new series called When God Doesn't. We're going to be uh, talking about when God doesn't seem to care and when he doesn't uh, do what we want him to do, when he doesn't work fast, when, uh, when he doesn't um, uh, seem to come through. Like, what, what do we do in, in those situations. Um, but we're not there yet, okay? So uh, every week I've asked you to read Acts chapter two throughout the week and uh, to pray at least once throughout the week for a movement of the Holy Spirit here. And before we move on uh, too quickly to a new series, take this week and do that one more time. Read Acts chapter two. Uh, pray at least once 
uh, for the Holy Spirit to do something here that's clearly undeniably him. We talked about reading Romans chapter 12 this past week as well too, and I hope you did that. That's an incredible chapter that, that very practically speaks to loving one another. All right, so Acts chapter two, uh, again, you, you should be there. Uh, we're gonna read it uh, again today, the same passage that we've read for these past three weeks, uh, Acts chapter two, verses 37 through 47. And we're gonna talk about the church being a multiplying community. Now, I'm just gonna read today, but just as we've done each week, uh, if you could please stand for the reading of God's word. Uh, and this is not some weird ceremonial thing. Um, this is just to show reverence for the fact that this book is not just any other book, but this is the word of God. And it being the word of God is trustworthy. It is trustworthy and it's powerful. So let's read Acts chapter two, verses 37 through 47. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. This is the, the multitudes of people that were listening as Peter, um, the, uh, the apostle spoke or, or preached. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord, our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Verse 42, and they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers and awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And there were selling, uh, and they were, excuse me, selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who are being saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we do thank you and praise you for the chance that we have to come together. Uh, this is awesome. And uh, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you that, um, that we, can, we can come together, uh, not just to come together, not just uh, for some abstract or, or a purpose that we, we don't really know about, but thank you that through your word, we can come together to focus in on Jesus. That, that we know and that we understand um, that while we were in sin, God, you didn't leave us in that condition, but you sent your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, you came willingly for people that the Bible tells us were enemies of yours. We were enemies. And yet you came and you died for us, for us took the punishment that we deserved. What an incredible thing. I thank you and I praise you for that. So I pray that as we um, look into your word here this morning, I pray that you'd open our eyes. God, open our eyes. I pray um, that... Uh, that you might incline our hearts to yours. I pray that you might unite our hearts with yours. I pray that you'd satisfy us in you and lead us into all truth. And God, we're asking, we're begging for a movement of the Holy Spirit here. We don't want this just to be another church service. We're done with that. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you can have a seat. <clears throat> Uh, we're talking about multiplication or the church being a multiplying community. Now, I, I saw like as soon as I mentioned multiplication that some of you started to twitch a little bit uh, because you started to recall your math classes when you were young, right? Anybody love math in here? Anybody not like math in here? Oh, yeah. Wow. You're carrying your hand shot up very quickly. All right. Most people I've found don't like math. Unfortunately, I like, I really, really liked math um, growing up, okay? 
Um, but when we talk about multiplication, we're talking about a word that's used with mathematics, right? We're talking about a mathematics process um, where it kind of speeds up the, getting the answer of, of the same size groups being added to each other over and over and over and over and over again, all right? So it's in a way sort of this repeated addition idea, right? So if you have, for instance, right here, all right, so multiplication equals repeated addition. Um, if you had five times nine, you're going to multiply or, or you're going to add five, nine times. All right. So it'd be five plus 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 five. I think that was nine. All right. Or you could just do multiplication here and, uh, we'll give 75,000 points. Okay. To the person that knows the answer to nine times five or five times nine. Just put up your hand real quick. Oh, I saw one right back here. What do we got? 45. All right. You get 75,000 points. Way to go. Now, just so you know, unfortunately though, Mrs. Collier over here got 220,000 points last week. So you're just a little bit behind. All right. Um, yeah. So multiplication is really actually just repeated addition is what it is. Well, that term multiplication is not just something that's used in the mathematics world, but it's also used in the Christian world, uh, the Christian realm. And, and what we're really referring to when we talk about multiplication is we kind of get our basis for that from uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Uh, I encourage you, and we're going to be jumping around to some scripture. If you can turn there in your hard copy Bible or pull that up on your device, I encourage you to do that. It's certainly going to be on the screen, but always, if you can turn there in your Bible or pull that up on your device, I encourage you to do that. All right. So Matthew chapter uh, 28, 18 through 20. Uh, and these words, if you've been in church for any amount of time, usually are pretty familiar. This is what's called the Great Commission. Anybody ever heard of the Great Commission? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and read this. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, behold I'm with you always to the end of the age. Now, Jesus here, uh, this is him directly speaking, and he's, he's speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to these, these people that have closely followed him for uh, about three and a half or so years. Uh, like, these people ha have been with him kind of through thick and thin in a way. And, and it has cost them a lot. Like, they have left everything to follow him. They've abandoned self. They've abandoned kind of living after their own desires. And they've turned to and followed Jesus. They've abandoned trying to, to be accepted of God by what they do. And they've turned to Jesus, realizing that he's the only way to be accepted by God. And so this right here is the Lord Jesus Christ giving the mission um, that these disciples or these people that are followers of him are supposed to be carrying out. Uh, he tells them that, that their mission, if we can simplify this, that their mission on earth is to go make more people that just like the disciples, to go make more followers of him. That's a very simplified version of that. This commission is understood not just to be something that applies directly to the, the, the people that Jesus was speaking to when he spoke these words, but this applies to Christians throughout all generations. This is go, every Christian, go. If you have uh, abandoned sin, uh, abandoned self, you've turned to Jesus, you're not living for your own desires, you've looked to Christ and you've said, I realize that I cannot work my way to heaven. There's no way for me to do that. Forgive me of my sin, cleanse me of my sin. Trusting in you to be accepted by God. If that's you, then this applies to you. Go, therefore, make disciples of all Nations, go make more followers of Jesus. This, the idea is, is broken, time-bound people that have found Jesus, taking the message of the gospel, taking Jesus 
to other broken, time-bound people that haven't found Jesus. Um, And this is actually what we see, like see taking place in Acts chapter 2. So go ahead and flip back over uh, if you're following along there in your Bible to Acts chapter 2. I want you to, we we read it, but I want you to read and just kind of hear verse 41 again. Um, And so verse 41 says, So those who received his word, that was Peter as he preached the gospel, those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. So Matthew 28, 18 through 20 is really about repeated addition, right? Jesus is saying, go make more followers of me. Repeat that addition process or multiply. And here we actually see that taking place. The disciples who are followers of Jesus, God uses to multiply or to add 3,000 souls as followers of Jesus. But what's neat is this doesn't stop there. So this was addition one time, 3,000 of them, but then this keeps repeating. Look at verse uh, 47, end of verse 47. It says, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So again, we see some repeated addition here. You can flip over as you go further on in Acts. You can flip over to Acts chapter five, verse 14. And it says, and more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. You can flip over to Acts chapter six, verse seven, and the Lord, and the word of God, excuse me, continued to increase and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of those priests became obedient to the faith. You can flip over to uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. You can flip over to Acts chapter 19, verse 20. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. This is broken, time-bound people taking the message of the gospel that these people have found Jesus All right, they're taking that message to broken time-bound people who haven't found Jesus. And we see the, the increase that continues, this repeated addition that keeps happening that we get as the basis from Jesus's words in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, or what's known as the Great Commission. Now, last week, uh, we went back to uh, the first book of the Bible to, <coughs> excuse me, not COVID. Um, we went back, just want to make sure it's clear for everybody, all right? Um, uh, we went back to the first book of the Bible to kind of understand a little bit better of uh, what was happening with some of the languages here in Acts chapter 2. And I want to go back again to the first book of the Bible, Genesis, uh, to be able to understand this uh, great commission just a little bit Better What we're seeing play out here in Acts chapter 2. So go ahead and turn over to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, and this is what we read last week. This is Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Uh, And it says this, it says, And God blessed them, that is, the humans that he had created. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. All right, now, uh, I think I counted last service. I think it's the 13th word in. We have our word multiply, right? It's the word that we're talking about here today. This verse, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, is what theologians or like really smart Bible people uh, call um, the creation mandate. Uh, this is, uh, was the mandate that the, the, this new being called humans was supposed to carry out. Those and everybody else after them, they were supposed to be about filling the earth, multiplying, being fruitful or increasing the human population and spreading over all the earth specifically for God's glory. 
to subdue and have dominion over it would be to, to have authority over all the earth. And not necessarily to, to be violent about it, but, but to, to exercise authority over the earth in, in a gentle manner. This creation mandate was right alongside of the command not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, sin enters into the world. Um, Adam and Eve partook of the fruit and, and they ate, they, they disobeyed God. Sin enters into the world and man falls from its state of innocent obedience to God to, to the state of, of guilty disobedience to God. And this mars humanity. Where, where man was once innocent before God, they are no longer innocent. They're sinful. And because God is holy... That sin has to be punished. And so we skip ahead a lot of years and Jesus comes to earth. He lives a sinless life. He dies a brutal death for our sin to pay the punishment that we deserved to pay because of our sin. But he doesn't stay in the grave, right? Jesus dies on a cross, is buried, and he rises again victoriously, conquering sin, death, hell, the grave, Satan. Jesus is powerful. And he did all of that to lead a renewed human race, in a way. Um, Because Paul tells us even in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if you are in Christ, you are what? If you know the verse. A new creation or a new creature. You're not, if you have repented of your sin and you've trusted in Jesus, you're not like a, a nice, polished, painted up version of yourself that just looks a whole lot better. No, you are a new creation. A new creation. And so after Jesus having accomplished um, the, the salvation for mankind, for those who would repent of their sin and trust in him after he had died and was buried and rose again victoriously, here in Matthew chapter 28, going back there, some of Jesus' last words, he in a way restates that original creation mandate. But he, he does so in such a way, in such a form that, that fits a fallen world being redeemed by Jesus. You could in a way, even though we call this the, the great commission, you could in a way call this the new creation mandate. Those that have turned from sin and self, repented of sin, trusted in Jesus as the only way to be accepted by God. And that is the only way. You're a new creation. And so this, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, this is your, this is my mandate. This is what we are supposed to be deeply concerned about and actively seeking to carry out. It is the Great Commission, but, but when you go back to Genesis and you kind of understand what Jesus is doing here, and you can kind of study this a little bit more for yourself. We don't have time to go in here, but if, if you want to go to Romans chapter 5 uh, and uh, go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you can understand a little bit more about Jesus being the last Adam. So there's, there's Adam and then there's Jesus, and, and Jesus being the last Adam. You can understand some more about some of this. But just as Adam and Eve and those who came after them were supposed to be concerned about that creation mandate here, us, those of you, myself, who have repented of sin and trusted in Jesus, we are new creations, and this is our new creation mandate, to go into all the world, fill the earth with followers of Jesus, those who bear the image of Christ. So 
uh, Jesus's words in Matthew 28 uh, are a big deal. They have their basis really from the beginning of time in uh, Genesis chapter one. But you know, it's, it's really, really fascinating to me um, that uh, when we talk about Acts chapter two, when, when, we, when we're talking about the Great Commission, we go back to Matthew chapter 28 and we go back to Acts chapter one, verse eight, a lot of times go be witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. All of that actually happened before Acts chapter two. And it's interesting that at least we don't see it like blatantly in the text here that the apostles reiterated the gospel, or I'm sorry, the, the, this new creation mandate to these people that were listening. Now, Peter did preach. He, he preached that they had crucified their Messiah. And then he says in verse 39 that this promise is for you and for your children are who are all who are far off that you can receive forgiveness of sins. Like that's all possible, but you don't see it blatantly in the text. You don't see Peter or the apostles say, hey, just so you know what your job is about now, what your life is about now is you are to go out and share this message with others. It's not blatantly in the text there. The verse 42 says that um, the... Uh, people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So we have to assume that if some of these are Jesus's, some of Jesus' last words, that, that the apostles in their teaching were, were making sure that they shared this new creation mandate or this great commission with these people, but it's just not blatantly in the text here. And so, um, so instead of just trying to just assume in there, we kind of look at what we do see in the text here. And what we do see in the text, and really even the text that we've read every single week, is that there was this unmistakable joy that these new believers, these new creations in Christ had. This unmistakable um, joy and, and life that, that these people had to, to the point where they're doing all the things that they're doing to the point where they are showing this, this crazy, awesome, uh, undeniable um, devotion to God and devotion to people. They, when they realized that it was their sin that put their Messiah to death, like this, the, verse 37 says, cut them to the heart. Like this weighed heavy on these people. It was me. Like I missed it. My sin put our Messiah to death. And then the fact that they realized as Peter preached that, that you can have forgiveness of those sins. Like there's a weight that's lifted for them and they, they're so joyful about this. They just can't believe they can be forgiven for this awful, terrible thing that they had done. Their sin put Jesus on the cross and there's forgiveness for that. That's amazing. And it leads to this joy that we see taking place. It leads to them having favor with all people. And it leads to this repeated addition that we continue to see over and over and over again. You know, so as I, I studied that, um, this is kind of what I thought about, and this is maybe what I, I submit to you. Those of you uh, that would say, listen, I, I have repented of my sin. I have trusted in Christ. I am a new creation in Christ. If that's you, that is awesome. And I think... At least we should be all pretty well aware that we have a mandate to fulfill. We call it the Great Commission, but we we could really truly call it the new creation mandate. Because we are, if you have have put your faith and trust in Jesus, repented of sin and, and turned to him, you're a new creation. So you could call it the new creation mandate. And just like Adam and Eve and those that followed after them were were supposed to carry out this this original creation mandate, 
we are supposed to carry out the new creation mandate. This is literally the difference between life and death, eternal life and eternal death for everyone in our world. And as per Matthew chapter 28, as we read, we're not supposed to wait for people to come to us, but we are supposed to go to them. Broken, time-bound people that have found Jesus, taking Jesus to those that are broken and time-bound that don't have Jesus. And you know, there's been a lot of tools uh, that, have, um, that people have thought up to, to be able to help us with that, to be able to help carry out the, the um, Great Commission or the, the new creation mandate. Uh, you can think about some of these names. I'm going to put some of these up in Facebook, our Facebook group for you guys to be able to see. But uh, there's Evangelism Explosion. There's uh, The Way of the Master. There's Share Jesus Without Fear. And that's an actual like app that you can get on your phone. We had a My Circle training, evangelism training uh, back in February. Uh, there's all kinds of tools out there. There's the art of neighboring. Um, some of these things are, are things that my wife and I and our kids have like really tried to put into practice. Um, as we've been with people in the community, as we're sharing the gospel with people in the community, even something as simple as like, if I was to ask you, who's your top three? If you would say that you are a new creation in Christ and, and I asked you, who's your top three? Who, who are the three people that, that you have, that you know, that you are praying for, that don't know Christ and that you're actively working to try to introduce them to Jesus? If I asked you that, you, you should be able to have some people come to mind. There's all these tools out there that really help us with this. But as statistics tell us, as people who study churches and and study the, the carrying out of the Great Commission or this new creation mandate, not many people are actually doing it. A whole bunch of tools. There's there's all kinds of tools out there. There's all kinds of great sermons out there, way better than this one. Um, You guys can laugh at that, by the way, just so you know. All right, it is true, probably. Um, All right, Um, there's great sermons out there, like that can help you. So, So really, truly, with all of what's available to us, we as Christians actually have no excuse for this new creation mandate not being carried out. Like, that's, that's just the truth. We have no excuse. And yet with all that's available to us, it's still not taking place. You know, I was thinking about it and I thought a lot of times, I think what, what we do when we talk about the Great Commission is, is we want to hear something really practical or like, hey, tell us what it is uh, that we can say to like transition in because I'm really just not sure how to transition in. Or I'm really not sure, like, I don't know if I know all of the parts of the gospel to be able to explain it and communicating is different than having in your mind. So I need a, I need a tool or I need another sermon or I, I need it. We go to that stuff and that stuff isn't bad. I'm not saying anything about that. There's great tools. I said, I, I employ some of those tools. Heather and I employ some of those tools. We, we've had great gospel conversations as a result inside of our community in our neighborhood. But I just wonder if maybe the place we should start should not be looking for the next tool or for the next sermon. But maybe as I go back to Acts chapter two, I can tell you that I am captured by the joy that these people had about this forgiveness of their sin that they had received. And it caused them to go out of their way. It caused them to do a whole bunch that's abnormal. It caused them to, to, to do stuff that was probably even pretty uncomfortable for them. And so um, here's what I submit to you. Maybe the place we need to start when it comes to multiplying or this repeated addition of followers of Jesus is not the next tool, uh, evangelistic tool, the not the next sermon. Maybe... Maybe we need to pray. Maybe we need to humble ourselves. We need to pray. We need to, to pray a, 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 like a, even like an agonizing in prayer, like a pretty gut-wrenching prayer and beg God 
to restore to us the joy of our salvation. Because we go out of our way to do things that we find joy in or that is fulfilling, right? We do things that are uncomfortable if we're joyful about those things. So maybe, just maybe, that's where we need to start. Caleb's going to come and uh, he's... I'm going to play a song and and sing, and uh, you can feel free to sing along with him. Uh, We're actually uh, going to have a baptism here this morning, uh, which is awesome and exciting. All right, so I'm going to head over to that here in just a moment. But here's what I, I would ask or request. Maybe right now, as Caleb sings, again, you can join in with him if you want to, but maybe right now you would take this time and just pray what I talked about. Maybe we just pray in unison as a church. Don't wait till you get home where we're separated from the the larger body here, okay? Let me pray right now for yourself, for our church, um, that God would restore to us the joy of our salvation, this joy that's so clear here in Acts chapter two. I don't ask you to pray that lightly. Because this joy took sacrifice. I don't say pray that flippantly because this cost these people something. But just pray. If you would humble yourself and do that, I think God would honor that in a big way. So go ahead and pray as Caleb sings. Come snatch to rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope. Wildfire in our very soul. Holy Spirit, come and make us now. We hunger and we thirst We fuse to waste our lives For your our joy and pride We see the captives' hearts release The hurt, the sick, the poor, the peace We lay down our lives for heaven's door I'm the church Pray we find this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness be. Show your mighty end. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. No force of hell can stop No beauty changing hearts You've made us for much more than this Wake the kingdom seek in us Fill us with the love the prize I'm the church We are the hope I Streets and land, set your 
exciting day. Uh, today we have uh, Amanda Brighting. Go ahead and come on down, Amanda. All right. Um, Amanda has uh, been desiring to get baptized really since before COVID hit, right? Yes. So you're coming to the church and uh, this is something that God has put in her heart that she desires to do. And she's been waiting, 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 waiting. And we thought, hey, uh, the opportunity that we have to come back together full time uh, in the building, this is a great opportunity to be able to do this for Amanda to be able to follow the Lord's command, believers baptism. All right. Um, <clears throat> So Amanda, as I was talking to her, just to share a little bit of her testimony, we a lot of times have a baptism video. We don't have that today. Uh, but just to share a little bit of her testimony, uh, she grew up in church and uh, had the privilege to, to kind of to be around Christianity all as she was growing up. Um, she was really, even as, as we talked and kind of fleshed out a little bit of, of her testimony, she was God aware, right? Very God aware as she grew up. Um, and uh, she would say that, that she believed in God, uh, but it wasn't until about five years ago, as uh, she, she tells it, as she was laying in bed, that God really just got a hold of her life. And, and she realized that she had never turned her life over to Jesus. Just as we were talking about with those disciples that had abandoned everything to follow Jesus, had, had turned from self to follow Jesus. They weren't just God aware. They didn't just believe in God. No, they had decided to follow Jesus. And at that moment, Amanda did that. And so it's been a bit of a journey, right? Yep. Um, and God's been working and working and working. And it brings her to this place right now. And we're super excited that she is here and taking this next step uh, as a follower of Christ. And, and we've already talked about the steps that we're going to work through after this. That this is not where it ends right here. Uh, but this is the, the first step in obedience to Christ. And we're going to continue on from here. So, Amanda, go ahead and step over here. All right. You can turn around, actually. Sorry. Step this way. Flip around. There you go. Awesome. All right. All right. So, Amanda, you have put your faith and trust in Jesus as the only way for salvation, right? Yes. Awesome. And you desire to follow him? Yes. With your whole heart? Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, in obedience to his command... Um, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of Jesus' death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Awesome. So excited for you. Go ahead and take it away, Kayla. Amen. Hey, that is so cool that we got to share in that together. Amen. So uh, for those of you online, you're probably seeing the baptism still. We just have one camera on right now. So I apologize for that. You guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But um, let's uh, go ahead and let's stand and we'll pray and then you guys will be dismissed. God, thank you for, so much for our time together. Thank you that we could celebrate uh, lives turning to Jesus. We got to hear about the Highland High School kids. We got to see... Um, a fellow sister in Christ proclaim her faith in a public way. That's so cool to be able to share in that together. I pray that you bless the rest of our week as we part our different ways. But God, that you would move in us and you would be uh, in our hearts and working in our lives even this week. And God, I pray for opportunities to share that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, just a reminder on your way out, there is uh, giving stations if you'd like to do that. Otherwise, you are dismissed. See you guys.